Once again, we got this wonderful opportunity, a very great blessing from Bhagwan, to be able to sing in the powerful shine and offer it at His feet. Today, we shall see something different from the usual. I happen to read a certain conversation between Saint Francis of Assisi, Italy, and the brother Leo. And it reminded me of the complete nature of our Bhagavan, Yogi Ram With a shock I realized every bit of it that he was describing fits so well with the characteristics of our Bhagavan. I thought I could share this with you. One day, Saint Francis of Assisi was going, was walking with Brother Leo from Perugia to Saint Mary of the Angels, another church, another city, a few miles away. They were walking, the two of them. The whole day they walked and walked. And the Saint Francis all of a sudden started. Brother Leo, do you know what perfect joy is for us? Suppose to please God, the order, the brothers of our order should offer a perfect example of holiness and edification. Perfect moral emotional, intellectual, spiritual development through encouragement and instruction. You think it would be perfect joy? 
that we could offer our best to please God. Brother Leo did not know what to say. He did not know what perfect joy was. He waited for St. Francis to continue. St. Francis said, No, my brother Leo, it would not be perfect joy for us. And then he went on to say, Suppose our brothers get those powers, the special powers, with which they make the lame to walk, chase away the demons, give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the dumb, and above all, to raise the dead after four days. You think it would be perfect joy? Again, Brother Leo kept silent. He knew better. He kept silent and they were walking. They walked two miles just conversing like this. Now St. Francis went on to say, Dear brother, suppose there are brothers, the friars, who knew all languages, all sciences, and they possess the gift of prophecy, prediction of future. They have all the knowledge of the secrets of the souls in their possession. You think it would give us perfect joy? Of course, Brother Leo continued to silence. And then again, St. Francis said, Suppose our brothers know the tongues of angels, they have complete knowledge of the plants, the earth, birds and animals. You think it would be perfect joy? Of course, Brother Leo also continued his silence. And then Saint Francis went on to say, Suppose we have developed the power to preach and convert all the infidels to the faith of Jesus, you think it would give us perfect joy? Brother Leo still did not know what to say. Now thus they have covered two miles walking and talking. Now, Brother Leo could no more bear. He folded his hands and said, Father, please tell us what it is, this perfect joy. Immediately Saint Francis smiled and said, Brother Leo, we shall arrive at Saint Mary of the Angels, the church there. By then they had met heavy rain and a storm and it was so cold and there was so much snow, they were completely drenched. And were smeared with mud and completely exhausted. There was no water to drink, there was no food to eat. With all that, the exhaustion continued and Saint Francis said, look, in this condition of ours, 
we go and knock at the door of the church. St. Mary of the Angels. And the porter, the watchman, he comes out in anger. And then we tell him, we are two of the brothers. What would he say, looking at us, the way we are now, drenched and stained with mud, trembling all over with cold, totally exhausted, hungry, tired. One look, at, one look at us and then he would say, you are liars, imposters, deceiving the world in the name of brothers. Be gone. Go away. Go away from here. I know who you people are, the beggars. Get out. And then, of course, they were still trembling. And after some time, they could not bear the cold. And they knocked at the door again. Now this time, the porter was even more angry. And then he started to abuse them. He refused to open the gate. They were more exposed to rain and snow and they had to stay there till nightfall. And that is when Saint Francis asked him to knock at the door again. They were unable to bear. They were unable to go on. This cruelty from nature and the portal now this time he came out with the rod in his hand, with a stick. He started to beat them. He pushed them down and he started to beat them, pouring such abusive not language. Now they were wounded and bleeding. And that is when, after he was gone, Saint Francis said, Dear Brother Leo, if we can accept such injustice, such cruelty, such contempt with patience, without being wrathful, without complaining, with humility, with charity, knowing that it is God who spoke through the portal such language, and it was God himself who did all that cruelty upon us through the portal it is he who gave us the blows, calling us robbers, wild imposter, imposter. If he could accept such cruelty, such contempt, such humiliation, with a smile, with joy, with patience, that is perfect joy. And then again they knocked. Now this time the porter came. Now this, both of them were crying, literally, with tears, they were begging. The porter came and called them rascals, importunate rascals, and with the knotted stick, again he gave them a beat. But then, now, Brother Leo knew the perfect joy, what his father, Saint Francis, meant. 
When I read through this, I was in tears because every word, everything about it reminded me of our Bhagwan. What he went through in the hands of the local thugs when he was absolutely defenseless, vulnerable, completely absorbed in God and in his father's work, unmindful of all the cruelties they heaped upon him. And what did he have to say in the end? Oh, all Father's grace! It doesn't matter if this beggar is happy or unhappy, healthy or unhealthy. What matters is what pleases God. What pleases my father? This beggar is here only for father's work. And he never was ruffled. He saw only God's gaze behind everything, his father's secret gaze, his father's secret smile, even in the ferocious attack of the portrait. Father alone, Father alone, Father alone exists. There is nothing else, no one else. I remember a particular incident. Of course, there are several. Let's recall just one of them that once Bhagwan, with a thin frame, he hardly got anything to eat in those days. He was so thin, fragile, and he was walking from the town to the bus stand with his possessions. What were they? A coconut shell, and a country fan broken in places, and some newspapers which had something to do with his father's work. As he walked ahead, suddenly he was surrounded by those rowdies, the thugs, who had been waiting for such opportunity. They snatched away everything that he held, threw them out and started to beat him. One would give a beating and push him to the other. The other would do his part of it and push Swami to the third one. All the four were upon him, attacking. Such cruelty. He started to bleed, but Swami never uttered a word. He simply submitted his body to their attacks. When he described the whole incident, years later to me at Sudama, he said that there was a crowd of some twenty people and they were all standing there and watching. Some of them had come to this beggar for blessings and yet none of them came forward to support this beggar. And then he told me, Devki, this is the world. Never trust anybody in this world. The betrayal, the humiliation, his own exhaustion. 
and the wound, the injuries, and the bleeding. He simply submitted without a word, without any complaint, without murmuring anything. By then, somehow, the news reached two of his attendants, Sri Permal and Murugan, and they came running to the spot and they saw these people frightened and running away. So they were going to go after them, but Bhagwan said, Stop it, Parma. Stop it. Don't do anything to them. Parma said, Swami, what are you saying? Let us give them nicely, Swami, so that they won't touch you ever again. No, Parma. They have done their work. We shall do our father's work. This is only one of the incidents, one of the cruelties done upon him. Reminded me all that Saint Francis spoke about, the perfect joy, what we call the great bliss. I remember there was another incident. It was about twelve o'clock in the afternoon. It was noon. The sun was high up, oppressively. And Swami was sending people one after the other. And suddenly this man came. He was totally drunk. He had a knife in hand. And the knife was shining in the sun. He came and stood just outside the San Street house and started to abuse Bhagwan and called up challenging him. A. He called him names which I don't want to say. He said, Come out. Let me see. What kind of a yogi you are? Come out, come out. If you have the guts, come out. We all held our breath because I knew a drunkard could do anything in a fraction of a second. And he had a knife. But Swami got up immediately from his seat went straight to the Guru gate. You can imagine our reaction. I simply held my breath and I was praying to Swami Himself to protect Himself. He simply opened the door and stood there leaning on the wall and stared at him. Swami did not do anything else. He simply stood there, looked at that man. Within minutes, that man dropped his knife, screamed and ran away. We did not know what transpired between the two. But it was obvious that there was something about Bhagawan that frightened him or made him ashamed. Whatever it was, I saw Bhagawan. Bhagawan was still standing there, but this time his hand was up there in benediction. He was blessing this man. He stood there blessing this man until the man went out of sight. The other day we saw 
that when Mahatma Gandhi ji met Paramacharya, the one prayer that he made to him was, even if somebody comes to kill me, I should still be able to show love to him. So this is what we see in the life of Yogi Ram Sarutma repeatedly. Despite all the humiliation, cruelties, indignities heaped upon him, day after day after day, he had only love for the entire humanity. Why? Because he saw only God in everyone, in everything. My father alone exists. There is nothing else, no one else. Now this Bhagavan is here in front of her. The same way, very much like how he stood there on the doorstep, hand raised in benediction, eyes shining, such compassion. Let us appeal to his generosity, his compassion, and beg him to come to our rescue. Let us beg him for his immediate divine intervention to free the entire humanity from the clutches of this monster and bring bring back normalcy in every aspect of life. Bhagavan, we beg you a million times to remove the panic from the hearts of people, to arrest the rapid spread of the disease, to enter all those medicines injection, so that they would kill the viruses once for all. Please bless all those people who are waiting there in different stages of treatment and some not getting any treatment at all, waiting for a room. We beg you, Bhagavan, again and again, to bless them with all that is necessary for them so that they get well soon and return home safely. And again, all those great warriors, soldiers who are fighting the disease, despite the challenges, the discomforts they go through at the very risk of their life, Please give them protection and all-round welfare. We also beg you for a boost to our economy and above all, for constant remembrance of your name, for the right attitude to life, the attitude of being a fitting instrument, a willing instrument in your hands, to go about our life as an offering to you. And finally, we beg for that supreme blessing, the highest, so that we get transformed, both our inner and outer lives, get transformed and with purity and love in the heart. We will be able to see only your presence and blessings in every event of life. Jai Bhagavan Suraj.